Um, Nancy? I can do the chores on my own. I don't need any guidance from you. What are you talking about? Because you don't do your chores properly, Michael doesn't feel comfortable and can't work at home. What? You come home late every night, and how come you earn only 3,000 a month? What? Are you having an affair? Huh? Because you are, you work until late at night, and only $3,000. My mother-in-law, Nancy, blamed me for something I never did, based on the absurd misunderstanding. I sighed and I said, It's my husband's statement, you know. My name is Alice. I'm a 28-year-old office worker. I met my husband, Michael, three years ago. He was a representative of one of my clients. I am someone you might call a career woman. I was efficient in my work, but I could be impatient and narrow-minded at times. I was good at my job, but I could come across as a little intimidating. And then I met Michael. He had a very calm and easygoing personality. As we spent time working together and get to know each other, I started to have a more relaxed mindset. I had a tendency to get frustrated easily, but I started to become calm. People at my work told me that my facial expression softened somehow. Then one day, Michael asked me out for lunch. After that, we would often go out for dinner, started dating, and then our relationship became official. And after a year, he proposed to me, and we got married. We got along well as a married couple. Michael has a calm personality. It's a good thing, but there are times when I think he's too laid back. When we go out together, he won't be ready until the last minute. When I ask him to take out the trash or clean the house, he does it too slowly. I've come a long way of working on my impatient nature, but I still think he's too laid back. I often fail to hold it in and say things to him because I feel he is too laid back. At first, he apologized and said, Oh, sorry. But he started to get annoyed with me and complained. Why are you rushing me so much? It's not worth fighting over such little things. I regretted how I treated him. Since then, I tried not to say anything about how my husband does his things. But then something I couldn't possibly tolerate happened. It all started when one day my husband said to me, I, I got fired from my job. What? What happened? He said, they can't just overlook it anymore. Huh? What have you done? I've been late too many times. Huh? My husband leaves home 30 minutes later than me. I would leave the house before him, so I had no way of knowing if he was late or not. Too many times? How many times were you late? Well, I mean, actually, it's kind of almost every day. What? How? When I asked him about more details, I found out that my husband was not just a little late every time. He was often an hour or two hours late. How could you be that late? By the time I leave, you're already up, you're dressed, and you're already. You should be able to make it on time. Yeah, I just... I was being careless. I mean, I sometimes fell asleep, or I lost track of time while playing video games, and that I'm late by the time I realize. What? I don't understand. You don't take your work seriously, do you? My boss said the same thing to me. 
No wonder you got fired. Did you really think you could get away with it? Well, I suppose it can't be helped. What's wrong with you? Go and apologize to your boss. You have to ask him to give you another chance. No, that won't be possible. I've already said I understood. Why did you quit the company so easily? Well, to be honest, I thought it might be a good opportunity. What opportunity do you mean? I was appalled by his nonchalant appearance. Then what now? What are you going to do? You have no job. Well, I'll get the unemployment benefits, so I can start working after that stops paying. Don't you think you might as well start working sooner? But I'll get the unemployment benefits. I don't need to push myself to work. Seriously? I began to think that my husband might be just lazy rather than laid back. After that, no matter what I said, he would dismiss me, saying, I don't want to work as long as my unemployment benefits are coming in. And he just stayed at home, and he didn't do the housework, nor did he cook dinner for me. On the contrary, he would eat foods from the fridge, and he leaves the dishes he used at lunchtime unwashed. I would get annoyed and point that out to him every time. Oh, I'll do that next time. And tries to let it slide. To be honest, I was getting more and more disappointed with my husband. And then one day, when I came home from work, the inside of the house was very clean. The sink in the kitchen was spotless. No plates left on the table. The floors were also clean. What happened? This house is very clean today. I asked Michael, who was in the living room, lying down in the couch. He looked up at me and said, Huh? Oh, hey Alice, you're home. At that moment, I heard the sound of flashing in the toilet, then the bathroom door opened. I turned around and saw someone unexpected. It was my mother-in-law who came out of the bathroom. Oh, N Nancy! Alice, it's been a long time. You just got home, don't you think it's too late? It's been a long time, but every time I see her, she always finds something to complain. I wasn't terribly excited to see her. It's not that I disliked her, but she was the one who disliked me. When I married Michael, I went to see my parents-in-law for the first time. My mother-in-law frowned when I mentioned the name of the college I graduated from. Are we supposed to be impressed that you have a degree from a prestigious college? I don't like pretentious women. I was shocked to hear this, and this was our first meeting. My father-in-law immediately said, That's not a nice thing to say. You're just being envious. Then Nancy fell silent immediately. But even after that, she made sure that I know she didn't like me. I started to have a hard time with Nancy. That is how I wasn't too happy to see her. I'm sorry, I didn't know you were coming. If I knew, I would have come home earlier. You are such a shameful wife. Your husband is taking a paid day off to stay home, and you're working instead of doing your chores? What? I looked at Michael. Well, Mom, thanks for coming over today. You've been so helpful. Please, stay for dinner, would you? Alice will cook right up. What? Who says who will cook? No, I don't want to eat dinner made by Alice. I don't want to cook for you either. Nancy said, See you soon. Exclusively to Michael and left. Once she left, I said to Michael, Did you ask your mother to clean the house for you? 
How could you think that I did? I told her today's my day off and she just came over to see me. Then she saw all the mess in the house and she cleaned it up. Oh no. What? What's wrong with it? It's clean now and it's nice, isn't it? Yes, but it must have appeared as if I never did housework at all. I don't think she cares about that. Didn't you hear what she just said to me? She was outright complaining about me. What? She was? I was totally appalled. He doesn't seem to care about other people at all. I doubt he ever considered what people were thinking or what they care about. And after that night, Nancy continued to visit us. When I came home from work, she was just there, unannounced. She would complain about this and that, and then leave. Do you work like that every day? You must be so proud of being a career woman. But I wish you didn't neglect your work as a wife. I work late because my husband had no job. Unemployment benefits only cover a certain amount, and that wouldn't be enough. That's why I'm trying to make up the difference. You don't do the chores and you don't have a baby. I feel sorry for Michael that he married such a bad wife. Nancy says, My mother-in-law says whatever she wants about me. I wish she would be more upset with Michael being too lazy. Why doesn't she ask Michael to do the chores when he stays at home all day long? Is it because she just doesn't like me that she keeps complaining about me all the time? Last time, Michael played dumb by saying that it was his paid day off. But now that his unemployment benefit is exhausted and Nancy visits us quite often, I'm sure she's wondering why he's home all the time. Michael did start working after his unemployment benefits ended. But it was only a part-time job, and it's only on Saturdays and Sundays. Apparently, he wanted to stay home during the weekdays because I was out for work and he had the house to himself. I've gotten so much slack up until now, but this has become too much. Hey, would you be able to work a little more? You know. Just because I'm working full-time, it doesn't mean you can afford to be a part-timer. What if we're going to have a baby? We're going to need a lot more money. What? Are you going to have a baby? I said if. Oh well, why do you have to talk about something that hasn't happened yet? I'm just trying to say that I want you to get a proper job. Why do I have to? We are happy enough just the way we are now. And that's because I'm working overtime and earning money, isn't it? I think you're good at work, so it's good that you're working longer hours. You can do a little more at least, can't you? I'm already doing my hardest. You have your mom to do the housework, don't you? She's visiting because she wants to see me. Oh, speak of mom. She said since she'd been visiting here so often, maybe she should move in. What? No, no, wait. I don't want to do that. Why not? Because your mom and I don't get along, you know that. I think you guys are doing just fine. How can you possibly think that? I'm telling you, I don't like this idea. Don't say that. I've already told her that would be no problem. Mom's more than ready. Oh boy. I had enough. Michael was acting so randomly. Nancy usually visited our house on weekdays when Michael was home. But now she started visiting on weekends too while he was out for work. Nancy said, I am going to train you to be a better housewife. 
because you'll be living with me soon. A real wife should be good at the housework. Nancy would say something like that and kept giving me all kinds of instructions. I was left alone with my mother-in-law on my days off and I was forced to do the housework with my mother-in-law all day. I was pressured and exhausted. Um, Nancy? I can do the housework just fine by myself. I don't need your instructions. What are you talking about? It's because you can't do the housework properly that Michael cannot focus on work at home. What? What do you mean? Michael told me. You are too busy at work and barely home, and the house is too messy to concentrate on his work from home. That's why I come here regularly to do the housework that you are supposed to do. Wait, wait a minute. Did Michael say that? Yes, he did. He told me he couldn't complain because you seem to be enjoying your work so much. He's such a kind boy. And you, on the other hand, you took advantage of Michael's kindness and neglected your obligations. Also, I just found your pay stub. You are not even making good money at all. What? Did you just read my pay stubs without asking me first? Shut up. I found it when I was cleaning up. By the way, you come home late every night to earn only $3,000 a month? What? Are you having an affair? What? Because you are. You work until late at night and only $3,000. That's not suspicious. I know what it is. You work only part-time and the rest of the time you were seeing another man, weren't you? Oh, I knew it. An independent, educated, self-centered woman like you thinks she's a queen, that she is so important that she can do whatever she wants. But when I get the evidence for your affair, I will send you to hell. You'll pay for betraying Michael. Nancy ranted about something I never actually did. There must be a huge misunderstanding. I sighed and said to her, That's Michael's statement, if I'm not mistaken. What? No, it can't be. He has a full-time job. Just because he started working from home, it doesn't mean he's getting paid less, does it? Michael got fired from his job for being late too many times. What? You can just call the company to check. He's working part-time on weekends, but he doesn't want to take up any more work than that. Nancy looked confused by what she just heard, but wasn't convinced. You are lying to me. Good try, but you can't deceive me. If you say so, I'm done with all this. What do you mean you're done? I'm divorcing Michael. What did you just say? I tried to talk to Michael so many times, but he wouldn't listen. And you are always picking on me. I'm going to pack and leave. When I said that, Nancy was upset at first, but then she started arguing with me again. Oh, really? I'm glad I don't have a daughter-in-law like you anymore. Michael would be better off living with another decent woman. Get out of here. I'll celebrate your divorce. Thank you. I'll go to my parents' house then. I'll ask my lawyer about the divorce proceedings. My son will be finally have peace. It would be me regaining the long-lost peace, I thought to myself. I rushed to pack up my things and went to my parents' house. I have been talking to my parents about this for a while, and they told me it would be better to get a divorce. They welcomed me when I locked on the door. A few hours later, I ignored all calls from Michael. Then I got a call from Nancy. I answered the phone. 
Nancy sounded unnerved. Hey, what's wrong, Nancy? Uh, Alice, I am sorry for what I just said earlier. Michael told me everything. I, I can't believe your salary was over six thousand dollar a month. Michael's was three thousand. I told you it was my husband's. I'm sorry I am misunderstood. Also, you were the one paying the rent, weren't you? Since Michael lost his job, yes, I was paying it. I apologize for the bad things I've said to you. So I need you to come back. Michael's mad at me and yells at me. I know I can count on you. What? What do you mean? Then Nancy told me a shocking news. She had been having an affair, and my father-in-law found out about it. They'll be getting a divorce soon, and she is about to be kicked out of his house. She says she is putting it off for now, saying she has something to do before she leaves. She was planning to move into the house where Michael and I were living in. Is this the reason why you are trying to get me back? Because I was paying the rent, so that you won't have to worry about the rent. Please, I didn't know that Michael was such a lousy man. I'm already broke because I have to pay compensations. I'm sorry, but I can't help you. I don't love Michael anymore, and I don't like you either. You'll have to manage on your own. No, please, no. Then I heard Michael on the phone. Oh, hey, Alice. At that moment, I immediately hung up. I don't want to talk to him anymore. I just texted him to say, "You can talk to my lawyer." Then I blocked him on my phone. Of course, I didn't forget to block Nancy's number too. After that, thanks to my lawyer, the divorce was successfully finalized. According to a mutual friend, Michael lives in a cheap apartment with his mother. They are living a poor life. Moreover, Michael got fired again from his twice-a-week part-time job because he was unfailingly late. At this point, I don't think I can save him anymore. On the other hand, I moved to an apartment near my office. I was able to make myself more ideal environment to focus on my career. As a result, I got promoted. I earn a lot more now. I am not looking for a relationship for a while, so I am going to concentrate on my work. Her husband seems like a really lousy person, and he doesn't even feel bad about it. That makes him even worse. And the mother-in-law got what she deserved, right? The two probably has to live in poverty for a long time. Keep up the good work, Alice. Thank you for sticking around until the end. Please subscribe to our channel if you've enjoyed this video. See you in the next one.